Hello, welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys so much for clicking on this video. You are helping a girl out. So as you can tell by the thumbnail and title of this video, we are going to be talking about 1950s fashion. So today's video is not only talking about the 1950s style, but we're also going to be talking about how each body type would be dressing during that time. So before we start, I do want to say real quick, I won't take too much of your time. I just got monetized. Ah! It's like, this is literally my biggest accomplishment, like, that I've had in years. Okay, like years. So. Thank you so much. Okay, so first we are going to be talking about the ideal body type of the 1950s. So during the 1940s, we were at war. It was very stressful and people were having to work super freaking hard. And once the 1950s hit and the war was over, everybody was like, okay, I want to go home. I want to wear my little dress. I want to be cute and feminine and I want to take care of the kids. And that is exactly what we did. So everybody really wanted that feminine look. So the most popular body type during this time was in fact the hourglass. So the specifics of this era was hourglass, big hips, big pointed bust, which, okay, I need to stop right there. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this. If you haven't, get ready to laugh. Pointed breasts were like the fad okay it was like the iphone now like i have the pointy bosom like it was a thing okay and nobody like knows why i think it's kind of funny a lot of people have theories on why this was so popular during this time one theory is that during the 1950s there was a space race and so like the bra kind of looked like the point of a missile. It's crazy how much like the world affects fashion. Like, oh, we want to go to space. Well, I want to go to space, but I can't. So I'll just wear like pointed bras and like pretend I don't want lace. I want pointed bosom. Uh, bigger hips and also like smaller shoulders. So small sloped shoulders were very in. Also cinched in waist. Those specifics make me think more of like a pear. So I feel like hourglass and pear really work well during this era, but hourglass definitely like is what the fashion was going towards. So people who had this type of body during the 1950s, I'm sure you guys have heard of them. Marilyn Monroe, a queen. People literally say that Marilyn Monroe was fat. She was not fat, okay, stop it. Stop it. A lot of people are talking about this picture where she like has a belly, but literally she was pregnant. Okay, like stop it. <laughs> Another person is Elizabeth Taylor and also Sophia Loren. So all these three women had very iconic body types. A lot of the reason why they were famous was because of their bodies. They are all beautiful and go them. <laughs> all right, so now we are going to be talking about the fashion, the popular clothing pieces of the 1950s. So the main goal of fashion was to create the hourglass shape. So all of these clothing types are really going to help try and create that hourglass shape. So first we are going to be talking about the 1950s cuts. So the main cuts of the 1950s were fit and flare. Obviously this is what I'm talking about. Like they literally would have something like super cinched in on the waist, like just going like boo. And then they had like the biggest skirts like ever just going but hourglass bitch so that was one of like the styles that really honed in on that body type so fit and flare button ups were super super in i'm not really sure exactly why i think it was more of like a casual stay-at-home mom who would wear like the button up top with like a bigger skirt or something comfortable. Also, button-up shirts usually have like V-neck, so that was very flattering to um, kind of draw your eye in towards your cinched waist. And then also cinched waist, like, you know, obviously that's really iconic during this time, what they were trying to do. All right, next is 1950s necklines. So V-neck, uh, I am a V-neck kind of gal, okay? This time period, with all these V-neck cuts, your girl would be all right, I'd be good. I'd be happy. Like I said, they helped kind of draw your eye in towards your cinched waist. Off the shoulder, these obviously would not be for like inverted triangles, like people with bigger shoulders should avoid this, but off the shoulders were super popular because like what was in was kind of like smaller shoulders. I think they kind of showed that off, even though literally off the shoulder shirts like sh make your chest look bigger. But I think if you had like a smaller chest, wearing that would kind of like make it look larger and give you more of an hourglass. 
up for debate, but I think that's probably why. Next is the square neckline. That was really popular. Sweetheart. Sweetheart is like iconic. And then also scoop. So all those necklines are really popular during the 1950s. Next, we're talking about the 1950s pants or skirts, just like lower half. <laughs> All right, so pants-wise, high-waisted shorts were very, very popular. Obviously, high-waisted kind of helps not only hide your stomach, but like cinch in your waist a little bit, show off the curve. So they were a little bit baggier, so they weren't like super tight high-waisted shorts. They were a little bit looser, which is nice. Same with capris. Capris were really in. They were also a little bit looser fitting. Circle skirts were huge. They were also called poodle skirts, which I'm sure you heard of with like the little embroidery embroidery on it. Poodle skirts, circle skirts. They were just like really big fluffy skirts. Pencil skirts were really in this, which is kind of funny because it's like the opposite. It's like accentuating your, your figure instead of like poofing it out. But people who wear hourglasses would wear this because they could, honestly. And the knee length skirts. Usually the knee or below is what people wore, but usually like knee length I saw is like the most popular type of like skirt or pant or anything like that. So besides the shorts, obviously. All right, next are 1950s dresses. So A-line was huge during this time, huge. A-line works so well for so many different body types. As we talked about already, big skirts were in, humongous ones, just bring them all to me, I will wear them. Wiggle dresses were really, really in, and also bell dresses. Bell dresses were like kind of an in-between of pencil skirt dresses and big dresses. They were kind of like more, more pencil, but they had a little bit of fluffle on them, so it kind of helped. I read that they were not very good for body types because they just cinch you in a little too much still, but they were popular, so put them on the list. So if you were a rectangle during the 1950s, what would you wear? I'm going to be using the little thingies that I made because I worked hard, okay? And I wanna use them. For the cuts during this time period, all of them are pretty good. I mean, there's not one that I would be like, no, 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 you better not wear that, so. Cuts are good. For necklines, um, V-neck is awesome for rectangles. Really helps draw your eye downward. Off the shoulder is great because rectangles have really great shoulders and hips. Like they're very much aligned. So off the shoulder shouldn't really be much of an issue unless you have like a smaller hip. Square necklines, I would not recommend for rectangles. Usually square necklines you would avoid anyway because they give you a very like boxy shape. Sweetheart and scoop necklines are both Super awesome, so any of those they would be able to wear besides the square. All right, next is pants. All right, so high-waisted shorts, that should be fine. High-waisted usually helps rectangles like make a waist, especially during this era. Shorts and capris, which we're gonna talk about in just a second, are a little bit more of a looser fit, so it's gonna help kind of floof you out a little bit and give you more of a hourglass look. Capris, I was kind of like on the fence about capris because I heard that rectangles shouldn't wear like straight leg pants because you'd literally just be straight all the way down. But like I said, capris are a little bit of a looser fit and then also the high waist to cinch in the waist. I feel like you could get by with it. Circle skirts. Circle skirts are gonna be rectangles best friends, okay? Because it really helps create a poof and then you cinch in the waist. It's gonna look awesome. That should have been the number one style that all rectangles should wear for sure during the 1950s. All right, pencil skirts. I do not recommend pencil skirts. Pencil skirts are very tight fitting and cling to your body. So there's not really anything you can hide. So it would show off the more square structure of your body, which is fine because your body's beautiful. But during this time period, everyone was trying to create an hourglass look. So for that reason, I would say stay away from pencil skirts. So, and then the last thing is knee length skirts. I don't really feel like this specific thing has a problem with any of the body types, but I just put it on there because it was something that I researched and most of the time, you know, it would be knee or below. So rectangles, like no issue with that. All right, next is dresses. Oh. You guys saw my water bottle. I'm drinking sparkling ice, by the way. So good. All right, dresses is next. So for dresses, A-line. A-line is magical. It's a magical shape. A-line is gonna be awesome for you. It's just gonna give you that same shape that the poofy skirts were, cinch in the waist, make it pop out. 
highly recommend. Big skirts, we already talked about it. Big skirts are phenomenal. They're gonna really help you, help you gain some poof in the bottom area. Wiggle dresses. Wiggle dresses are kind of similar to the pencil skirt. They're just gonna be very tight fitting and not very flattering for rectangles. So I do say to avoid that. The bell dress, honestly, is up for debate. It's kind of like a wiggle dress and a little bit of a flare. So the sides, as you can see on the hips, they kind of have a little extra fabric that's gonna help your waist kind of go a little bit more in. But at the same time, this dress is very tight and I don't feel like it would give enough of an effect for rectangles to really like say you should wear it. Some bell dresses don't look like that and it wouldn't work, but that one seems like I think that you could get by with it. Let me know what you think. If you're a rectangle and you're watching this, do you think that type of dress would look good on you if you tried anything on? Obviously I can't just like type in Google 1950s bell dress and an inverted triangle body type. Like nothing will pop up. But yeah, let me know what you think because I cannot decide. All right, next we are going to be talking about the pear body shape. All right, what would you wear if you were a pear in the 1950s? The cuts seem to be all good to me. I don't see anything that I would be like, Absolutely not. Those all seem fine to me. Next, we have the necklines, V-necks. V-necks, as you know, I love V-necks, but I did some research and for pairs, having a really low V-neck is not something recommended. Pairs' main job is to bring the attention up here instead of down there because their hips are bigger. So having a V-neck literally drawing your eye downward, not the best. I think if it's a small V, I mean, I don't think that's gonna break you, but deep V-necks are not something pairs should wear. And then also just Vs in general. You'd have to style it correctly, I feel like. I, I put an X, typically pairs should stay away from them. All right, so off the shoulder, square, sweetheart, scoop neck, all those will be fine for pear shape, especially the off the shoulder helps elongate this section. All these types of necklines are gonna help bring attention up here. I feel like off the shoulder is the best for pear types because that's like the one that brings the most attention up here. Next are 1950s pants. High-waisted shorts, work it, capris work it obviously like i said before they're a little looser fitting so instead of like accentuating it's gonna kind of breeze past circle skirts all right circle skirt i truly feel like this style was so in it would just hide your hips because like that's what you wanted it's big poofy hip i think they could wear them and nobody would know optical illusion you know anyway pencil skirts on the other hand no <laughs> because then they will literally see everything. So knee length skirts, not a problem. All right, next is dresses. A-lines, perfection. Like I said, having that, that shape to just kind of breeze by your hips, not to make them accentuated, but just make them, make them flow like a waterfall. Big skirts, like I said, I think you could get by. I think you can pass. Uh, wiggle dresses is a no-go. I will say if it accentuated your hips, and then it jutted out and it kind of aligned with your hips, I think that would work. So basically like a mermaid style wiggle dress, I think would work, but I also like, uh, so wiggle dresses, I put a big X on. Same with bells. I obviously like, you don't want extra fabric. No, that's all, that's like the worst dress for pairs. The worst. Next is inverted triangles. So first we are going to be talking about the 1950s cut. Literally everything an inverted triangle would want besides that pencil skirt at the end, which we're not talking about, but for cuts, everything looks great. All right, necklines. Necklines, V, necks. You already know where that shiz. Wear it to your heart's content. Wear every single little button-up shirt you can find, every V-neck you can find. V-necks were very popular. V-necks are the absolute best for inverted triangles. Off the shoulder, absolutely not. <laughs> Do not wear off the shoulder. It will broaden your shoulders. It will make you look absolutely huge and top heavy. Do not recommend for inverted triangles. Square, square is fine. Square usually has thicker straps, which is awesome. 
um, Sweetheart is good. I will say in that picture, she has very thin straps. I would recommend thicker straps for inverted triangles. Scoops look good on inverted triangles. All right, next is pants. So high-waisted shorts. Yes, the looser fit is gonna be amazing for you guys. Amazing, okay, the high-waisted, looser fit short, you guys. This is great, this is, you know what? I'm so excited for you guys. This is gonna look really good on you. Same with the capris, uh, the circle skirts. You guys, this is, okay, circle skirts were made for inverted triangles, okay? Like this, <laughs> this is what we need in our lives right now. What do you mean? Circle skirts are gonna look so good. They're gonna give you that. And then you're gonna have like bigger shoulders. I know like smaller shoulders are kind of like in or whatever, but you will have like the perfect hourglass with that because your shoulders are already like bigger and then you put a circle skirt, it's gonna be like a perfect hourglass, okay? If you have small shoulders, as you can see in that picture, the small shouldered girl with that big old skirt, okay? I know it's in, I know it's good, but that's not a very triangle, that's a pear, baby. That's a pear. She put herself into a pear shape, not an hourglass. You guys wearing those skirts would be an hourglass, okay? Prove me wrong, prove me wrong. You can't, cause this area's over. <laughs> All right, pencil skirts. We know, we know. There's so many body types pencil skirts do not work with. Sadly, inverted triangles are one of them. It's just gonna show your hips that they're smaller and it's gonna make your shoulders look bigger and that's not what we want. So, X and out the pencil skirt. Knee length skirts, those are fine. <laughs> they're always fine. All right, next is 1950s dresses. A-line, beautiful. They're gonna look amazing on you. Big skirts, as I just freaked out about. They're gonna be great. Wiggle dresses, no. I will say, like I said before, if it's the mermaid bottom, it will jut out and align with your shoulders better. So you could get away with that. The cinch and waist is really what we we're trying to drive at and the A-line is gonna look best on you. The bigger skirts are gonna look the best on you. So regular wiggle dress, no. Mermaid wiggle dress, you could get by with. Bell dress, that would be fine because it has the extra fabric on the hips, which is gonna help create more of the hourglass figure. So bell dresses, I would say yes. Next we have Apple. 1950s cuts, all of them work, which is amazing. Um, so apples are really, really gonna focus on their arms and their like chest area and their long, beautiful legs. They don't have much of a waist, so you have to create the waist and then really accentuate your arms and legs. That's the main goal of an apple. All of these necklines actually work really well. Yay, there's none that you guys can't wear, which is freaking awesome. V-necks are gonna help draw your attention, but if you have like a cinch and belt for your waist, it's gonna help kind of like, you know. So the V-neck's gonna work well, the off the shoulder is gonna elongate your beautiful shoulders and arms and make you look awesome. Square neckline, sweetheart, scoop neck, all those work really well for apples. All right, pants. Um, high waist shorts, let's go. Those are gonna look great. High-waisted shorts are awesome for apples. All right, circle skirts. Circle skirts are gonna be good. They're gonna cinch your waist, kind of hide the extra belly. Pencil skirts, obviously nobody freaking wears pencil skirts. Like, they're not gonna work. They're gonna show off all the things you don't wanna show off. Knee-length skirts are fine. All right, 1950s dresses. A-line dresses. A-line looks so good on apple shapes. So good. Also, big skirts. Like I said, they're gonna hide the excess hummy area and help give you a waist. Wiggle dresses. Wiggle dresses are no. Even if they have the mermaid, I would not do them. Same with bell dresses. In theory, like, yeah, wear a bell dress because it's gonna give you a little bit of hip and then you can kind of have the hourglass. But I feel like if you're an apple shape, like all your tummy is gonna be showing. Stay clear of bell dresses. Like you're gonna wear one, but I mean, I mean back in the day, you know? All right. Lastly, we have hourglass. Obviously, this era was literally made for hourglasses, so everything on this list does work for hourglasses. Now, now, I am gonna be the girl who says it, okay? Because I don't care. I would argue in the necklines, this picture of Marilyn Monroe. Okay, she, obviously, she looks gorgeous. So she has a perfect hourglass figure, but I would argue that she looks top heavy. Those shorts are very tight and she has off the shoulder, and she also has big breasts, and I just feel like, yes, it shows off her hourglass figure, I kind of feel like she looks a little top heavy. Also, I would argue, in the picture to the right, oh my gosh, like, yeah, there's an hourglass, but that's a pear shape. Those big skirts make it into pear. 
not an hourglass. So if you were an hourglass shape and you put on that big old skirt and you already have a perfect figure, you're gonna be a pair. <laughs> so I think that people were being very bottom heavy, loving the bottom half in this era. And, but it's just, it's the style, like an hourglass putting this on wouldn't work. Hourglasses have to either wear big bottom and big top to keep the same figure or tight top, tight bottom. And even though in this picture of Marilyn Monroe, I'm going back to this picture of Marilyn Monroe, she is wearing a tight, top and a tight bottom, which I think is perfect, but it's just the type of neckline she's wearing elongates her shoulders and makes her look a little top heavy. Am I crazy? I might be crazy. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you learned a little something something. I definitely did when I researched all this, it was so fun. Let me know what your body type is down below. If you need help with figuring out what yours is, I will definitely help you. Just leave a comment of your measurements and I will help you out. But let me know what your favorite style was. I really like the big skirts. I think they would be so fun to just like run around all the fluffle. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you super soon with a brand new video. Bye guys.